bullet train is here, Hell Monkey. As if you mortals can be saved with one little squeeze. Kill me, and I shall be replaced by another. And another. And another still. You cannot point that pet gun of yours at all demon kind. <laughs> threat shall be. One at a time, we shall seize the treasures of your life as spoils, and leave only emptiness and despair. My last gifts to you. <laughs> Just don't forget to wrap them, put the claws. By the way, Hotspur, how is your dear sweet Paul? Is she hanging in there? <laughs> Fuck you!
You let my unhand go now, stranger. And maybe I will blow your head off nice. Uh, Mercy! Uh, Help me! Better go. But can't you see the little peach is coming on to me? Come on to this, pendejo! Oh, demon hunter. Let's have no bite, no penetration. <laughs> you need more thrust! Que diablo es eso? That was just the appetizer, Hotspur. A taste of what's in store. So you know my name. And you don't know mine. Please, call me Fleming. Oh, you're not going to get bowdy over one little blonde bombshell? Tell you what, have the girl back, good as new. If you atone for your sins against me for slaying my legion of demons, admit that you challenged a greater power and lost. Admit that your dome will never measure my own. I will admit you're a fucking asshole. How's that, Fleming? <laughs> oh, so be it. A place for Paula has now been set at my table, mortal. You cannot have her back now. But come to my castle in the world, and you could still join in our revels. Such a tempting offer. I do love a party. Maybe we could play Pong. Or do shots! I would say, you slay me, Hotspur. But you don't. You can't. Now say goodbye to Paula. She has a lot of dying to do. And coming back to life, and dying some more. I like to keep my mistresses guessing. Yes, help her! Because in the meantime, I'll be helping myself. to the underworld is stretched out before us doesn't mean we have is to... Is there a problem, Johnson? Well, I'm just saying, demons are buttholes. You really wouldn't like it there. <laughs> Says the former demon. What's wrong? Lost your spine. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, look. If you want to go to the underworld, good on you. But you don't know that place. Look, look, look. Look what they did to me. A few little transgressions and now I'm doomed to an eternity of heavy metal jokes and... and Posing for pirate flags. It's only worse for mortals. Then all the more reason to go. They have Paula. So the way I see it, you are either with me, or you are not. No! <sighs> Get on. All right. Vamanos! The underworld lies just beyond the sound barrier. It's like super classified demon information. <sighs> Not according to the internet.
your old body, all right, Johnson? Then you can be my tour guide. Me? But I quit the whole demon thing ages ago, and really, my memory's absolute rubbish. Oh, I'm sure it will come back to you in no time. Relax, amigo. This is going to be an adventure. Our very own road movie. And the best part is, you never know what's waiting around the bend. Won't be on this side of the door. All right, let's start this road movie with some road kill. That's right, G. Don't let all that peace and quiet push you around. Huh. When demons hear the name Garcia fucking Hotspur, they run the other way. Johnson, what the hell is that thing? Holy cow! I don't believe it! Willie! That's one-eyed William! Friend of yours? Are you kidding? William is my aunt's first husband's adopted son from the Ukraine! Then you are practically brothers. You can't see shit up ahead. The underworld be a shadowy place. Anyway, not a problem. Take a look over there. You see that lamp? Hanging on the wall? I can light that up for you. The light shot, of course. Give it a try, G. There. Did I brighten your day? What can I say, Johnson? You are the right tool for every job. So when do I get to light up some demons? And I'm sure you'll have your chance. They hate my light shot. Leaves a nasty rash. Those white gems, G. Demons are not very talkative. What have they got to talk about? Once your soul rolls into town, that's it. You're damned. And Fleming doesn't let anybody off the hook. He sounds like a real dick. Tater. Johnson, why is there a goat head hanging on the wall? Oh, well, everybody knows that goats are a source of light. Uh, of course. Most new arrivals in the underworld are condemned to guard doors like this for the first hundred years. Oh, we all have to start somewhere. Garcia? <gasps> Paula? Come back! <laughs> P 
Hola! Easy, G. This place is full of deceptions and dirty tricks. Is that a floating... Strawberry! Oh, gimme, gimme, gimme! Oh, these things are like demon catnip when I was little. Johnson, do I take this strawberry? Yes! Jeez, excuse for having a little fruit fantasy. Don't you dare give my strawberry to that sprog on the door! No! Gee, you fairy squanderer! <laughs> ah, drinks! At least there's one good thing about the underworld. What, liver damage? That's the beauty of it. In the underworld, you don't die from drinks. They unkill people here. I was afraid of this. What? Why is it suddenly getting dark? This isn't ordinary darkness. If you stay in it too long, it'll suck the life out of you. Quick, use the light shot on the goat head. You can't stay in the darkness like this. It eats away the flesh of mortals. The goat head, hurry! How did you know shooting a goat would banish the darkness? How did you not know? Some demon hunter, I say. <sighs> Just warn me if I have to fuck a horse to unlock a door, huh? Hola? Is that you? I can't see for shit. Ahem. If only there were some way to shed light on this... Situation. Don't mock me, bitch. Just use the light shot on that lamp. Sorry. <laughs> Themselves. It's what's for dinner. Madre, not again! And this time there's no goat to save us! <laughs> Quick, the door! Run through the door! Ah, <laughs> oh, much better. No darkness and dare I say it, no darkness. Demons do love their darkness. Then why don't they just cover the whole underworld in it? Too much of a good thing can kill you. They say to wear sunblock in your world, right? Same idea. <laughs> nice one, G. How'd you know to use the light shot on that demon? Are you sure you have a tour guide?
beneath her when she picked out that lingerie. You? In a Victoria's Secret? <coughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Keep running! There's no way to disperse darkness this thick! More darkness dead ahead! At least we're standing on the bright side of things this time. You can call this bright. Better check your goat, da. What the fuck is that? Hmm. Let's go with big and hopefully dead demon, shall we? Underworld. That's right, and vending machines too. If you're damned, you're going to need convenient access to drinks pretty much 24 7. What does this do? Shh, 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 keep it down. That's a performance enhancer. Very shady. Very, very illegal. Uh, 
Johnson. Need eyeballs too? Perish the thought. It just so happens I'm a fruitarian, thank you. Ah! Stand the darkness longer. I'm not even going to ask how that makes sense. So, uh, does Willy always take a big smoky dump in public? Ah, you should see him piss. At least we can keep track of where we've been this way. Demons can't stand light. Gotta put it all somewhere, you know? Barrels. I can see they gave the problem a lot of thought. Cubes are blocking the door. Hey, look up there. There's a switch glowing the same color. Hold on. What? Where else have we seen that color? You reckon taking a walk on the wild side might bring this whole situation into perspective? Wait for me! Hijo de puta! Again. What's that fucker's fucking hand doing here? Um, it's his world. Nothing's out of Fleming's reach. He's literally got a finger in every pie. We're surrounded, G. Wait, we can use these barrels. They're filled with pressurized light. They'll explode. The door! 
Ну! Any demons try to challenge Fleming? You know, like a coup? <laughs> yeah, right. Do you know what happened to the last demon who tried that? No. Neither do I, G. All they found was a shish kebab with two ears, two eyes, two kidneys, and two. Uh, never mind. to bring down the house. Fleming likes opera. What? You thought he'd be the emo type? That corpse is reacting to the darkness. Light this place up before it spawns more demons. I don't know. You leave town for a few demon centuries and suddenly there's all this amazing new technology when you get back. Should I be afraid of a few puny earthquakes? What the hell? Are you afraid of that? 
shit. It's nice to be noticed, huh? No! Stronger demons require a constant supply of human blood, which they store in special repositories on their bodies. They're a source of great power, but also an exploitable weakness. Talk about wearing your heart on your sleeve. <laughs> and eyes are on the menu. But why do demons like berries? You don't know about strawberries? <laughs> They're demon fruit, G. Fleming's idea of a practical joke on the world of the living. They're made of ground-up tongues. That's disgusting. That's not the half of it. You thought Pop Her Cherry was just a figure of speech. <laughs> Mm, that fellow looks like 
looks like a VIP. Very important, pendejo. Something like that. Fleming gives his favorite souls special treatment. People who exited the world being in style. So not all demons are damned? Oh, everybody's damned. The VIPs are just comfortably damned. Little perks here and there. Such as? They get to keep their genitals. Find some darkness that gives us a clear shot at the switch. that barfs darkness, and they said this neighborhood was gentrifying. shot at the switch. that barks darkness, and they said this neighborhood was gentrifying.
Paula, wait! Stop running, my love! Paula, where are you? What the fuck? Paula! That doesn't smell like Paul, unless she stopped showering. <laughs> well, that killed my stiffy. It's a trap! What the shit? Demons like men, Garcia. They all try to get inside the prettiest girl. Sick! These twisted demons! Yes, well, that's the reason I left. Fuck this pendejo! If Mr. Man on Monster wants to play, magnifico. around here somewhere. Home. Show yourself, Hell Monkey. I think he's scared of you. He should be, Jay. He should be.
rock. Shove it into my face, G. Trust me, it doesn't mean we're engaged or anything. Might be a tight fit, but okay. So what exactly did that do? Blue gems let me transform into new tools of war, new gears of me. In other words, a new weapon. Magnifico. You know, I bet all the VIPs are walking around with blue gems. Dumpster, right? What? You said you met her at the supermarket. I did. It was the bin out behind the dime a dozen. And you just picked her up out of the rubbish and brought her home? Why not? Sometimes I think I hardly know you. What was that? I don't know, but we've got company, as in lots of. Well, if they pull up a chair, I would be happy to beat them with it. his fill. It was a cold and snowy eve. Certainly no night for a man without a home to be walking these grey and endless streets. Inside the pizza parlour, George Reed spun a lively tune on his harmonica. The local children giggled and pointed excitedly at the harmonica man as their parents glowed with approval. His reward would be all the pizza he could eat, six pies at least, and a warm bed in one of these folks' homes. He knew they were good for it. But when he tucked in for the night, George had not had his fill. As the years and calories stacked up, most men would have got older and fatter. Yet for all he consumed, George only got thinner as he washed from town to town. Tapeworm! Tonight, he plied his trade with some grannies and orderlies in a nursing home. His harmonica filled the room with joy. After devouring three helpings of pork chops and mashed potatoes, he eyed the plate of the old woman next to him. Juice dribbled down his chin. Go ahead, Georgie, she said. You're such a good boy, you shouldn't have to starve. But George had not had his fill. Early the next morning, he was already on the freeway with his thumb in the air. Where are you headed? said the man in the truck. Nowhere, said George. Anywhere! It was a new decade, and tonight George played to an all but empty bar in the city. He had lost a lot of weight. Afterwards, the joint took the stool next to him and asked him his name. The bartender leaned over the counter. You don't know this guy, Mary. George is famous, being all over the tri-state area. With a wink, he added, the man's insatiable. And that night, George proved it as he buried his face in Mary's beaver. 
Holy woodland creatures! And a boy, George! And a boy, George! Play that harmonica, she purred. But even after five trips to heaven and back, he had not had his fill. The morning after was an awkward affair as they stared at each other over coffee. One wanted to feel more, the other just wanted to feel. In his final days, George was all skin and bones. I can relate, except for the skin part. His last meal had been a mistake. It was on a sidewalk one night in a small suburban town that he came across the boy. Hungrily, and with an agonized grimace, he opened his mouth to beg for help. Out came a cacophony of wheezes and toots, but the boy understood. Wait, you mean Jorge ate his harmonica? Once he was alone, George Reed looked at the candy bar he held in one hand and began to cry. <laughs> They found George's half-eaten body in a market next town over. In one hand, he held a knife. In the other, a fork. Chunks of flesh had been torn from his chest and his arms. Blood framed an eerie smile. The wind that morning blew fierce, and as it whistled through the hole he'd carved out of his own neck, the harmonica man played his last song in this world. There were gawkers, and many knew him. They shared stories of how he'd filled them with hope, filled them with life. They, at least, had had their fill. <clears throat> Especially Mary. The End Our goat. Then let's put out some light. Oh, Bust a cap in those mother fudges before they douse the lights. You know, we never finished talking about you kidnapping Paula. I didn't kidnap her. You hauled her out of a skip. Isn't that illegal in some states? What did she say? Nothing. Not for weeks. I was afraid to even touch her, you know? Like she didn't belong to me. To anyone. But something changed. There was a phone call. Put that on hold, G. We've got company.
Now what's this about a phone call? Me and Paula were eating when the phone rang. Suddenly, she slams her fork down and says, Don't answer it! Creepy. First thing she ever said to me. But I got up to take the call. Johnson, you should have seen her. She jumped out of her chair, ran to the phone, and ripped it right off the wall. Whoa! Then she came and put her arms around me and started crying. It was the craziest, weirdest, sexiest thing I have ever seen. I have been hers ever since. What? Demons don't like teeth? The gun laws here are very strict. Haven't you wondered why they don't shoot back? You and I are violating almost every rule in the book. Heck, I'm practically made of teeth. No, siri. Maybe it's from Paula. Or at least someone with answers. Dios mio. Paula, is that you? When will this fucking torture end? From hottie to hamburger, just like that. Chase away the darkness, at least in short bursts. Just look at them. Fiery sprinkles in a great big chocolatey sky. Johnson, shut up. Let's take a closer look. Well, hi, hi. Name's Cricky of Fright. Of human. Of both worlds, my pappy said. Yeah, but what are you doing right these parts? You are. Why should you? All I see is. Look underneath the leathery exterior. I am a Steven understanding. Swipe name Girl. Doker Toodle. I am here, Kerb. You are on a quest to kids of evil's ass? Holy shit! <laughs> oh, I want in on some of this action. How can I? How can I? Well, I hope that you're offering more than just enthusiasm. I tell you what, I get pretty hungry, and I just love of them white jams. <laughs> you get a nose, and we can trade with the right incentive. I might even be able to introduce you to some real product. Know what I mean? <laughs> Magnifico. Okay, then chuck them.
is right down the hatch. Go on, feed me. Ah!